the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And our friends, we gather together today on this 21st Sunday of Ordinary Time. Uh, my name is Father Mitch Seymour. I'm the vocation director for the Diocese of Home of Thibodeau. And so we come to celebrate this Holy Mass. We take a minute to come before a God who is a God of love. And we know that our sins offend His love. So let us take a minute to examine our conscience and ask our Father for mercy and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of His good will. We praise You, we bless You, we adore You, we glorify You. We give You thanks for Your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who calls the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to Shebna, master of the palace, I will thrust you from your office and pull you down from your station. On that day, I will summon my servant Eliakim, son of Hilkiah. I will clothe him with your robe and gird him with your sash and give over to him your authority. He shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. I will place the key of the house of David on Eliakim's shoulder. When he opens, no one shall shut. When he shuts, no one shall open. I will fix him like a peg in a sure spot to be, put, to be a place of honor for his family. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Lord, your love is eternal. Do not forsake the work of your hands. Lord, your love is eternal. Do not forsake the work of your hands. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with all my heart, for you have heard the words of my mouth. In the presence of the angels, I will sing your praise. I will worship at your holy temple. Lord, your love is eternal. Do not forsake the work of your hands. I will give thanks to your name because of your kindness and your truth. When I called, you answered me, and you built up strength within me. Lord, your love is eternal. Do not forsake the work of your hands. The Lord is exalted, yet the lowly he sees, and the proud he knows from afar. Your kindness, O Lord, endures forever. Forsake not the work of your hands. Lord, your love is eternal. Do not forsake the work of your hands. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How inscrutable are his judgments and how unsearchable his ways. 
For who has known the mind of the Lord, or who has been his counselor, or who has given the Lord anything that he may be repaid? For him, and through him, and for him are all things. To, be, to him be glory forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. You are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against you. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi. And he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. For flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And then he strictly ordered his disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, my friends, and happy Lord's Day. Growing up as a kid, um, my dad always had a, a real hang up about his keys. And, uh, and if we had to borrow his keys for whatever reason, whether he had to go get something out of the car or go unlock something um, at the house, um, he would always make sure and tell us, now you know, you know where to bring the keys back, right? You bring them back to me. Um, and man, I, I never forget one time I forgot to bring them back to him and all of a sudden he was searching for them. And, uh, you know, he, uh, he definitely made me remember that I will always have to bring the keys back. The reason was because keys, uh, they're symbolic, right? They, uh, they assume an, an authority, a power. If I had my dad's keys, I could open up his office. I could go take the car out for a spin. Um, whatever he had access to, the Knights of Columbus Hall, I could go open that and I could go play pool if I wanted to. Um, I had full authority whenever I had his keys. And so keys are very important. Um, in today's gospel reading, we see uh, keys are involved in this, and we're going to get to what that means in a minute. This is one of my favorite gospel readings. Uh, the whole foundation of our Catholic faith, my friends, uh, is founded upon the scripture right here, Matthew chapter 16. Um, we see the very foundation of the Catholic Church being given right here. Now, there are a lot of denominations out there, a lot, hundreds of Christian denominations. But only one of them can claim that they have the authority given to them by Jesus to their founder, St. Peter. Every other religion that's out there is man-made, right? It was somebody along the way um, decided that they want to interpret Scripture however they felt like interpreting it, and they broke away and founded their own religion. That's just truth. What we have here as Catholics is something that no other Christian denomination can claim. We have this moment in Jesus' life and the life of Peter where Jesus establishes His church. And so it's fascinating. So let's look into all this um, and break down the Scriptures. We have three things that are happening here in the Scriptures today. First, uh, we have this great revelation of who Jesus is, right? We see this conversation that Jesus has in Matthew chapter 16, verse 13. He's talking to His twelve, right? The twelve apostles. And He says something. He poses a question. Who do people say that the Son of Man is? Speaking of Himself. He wants to know what the chatter is around town. What are people saying about Him? Um, not that He'd necessarily 
cares <laughs> because what they think of him or say about him doesn't affect him. But he wants to know. He's getting at something here. What do, who do people say that I am? And here's their response. Some say that you're John the Baptist. Others say that you're Elijah. And still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. Okay, put your brakes on for a minute. What do all those people have in common? John the Baptist, Elijah, Jeremiah, prophets from the Old Testament. What do they all have in common? One thing. <clears throat> They're all dead. <laughs> They're all dead. So people outside of their 12 are thinking that Jesus is one of these great prophets that has risen from the dead. That's pretty fantastic. So whether they believe that He's Messiah or not, which obviously most of them were not believing this at the time, they do at least believe that He was someone from the past that rose from the dead. Fascinating. I'm just going to put that there. Because Jesus then goes a little bit deeper and He asks a very personal question. He goes, okay, that's cool. I'm glad that's what they're saying. We're not even going to talk about it. Um, I want to know something. Who do you say that I am? John, who do you think I am? Thomas, who do you think I am? Bartholomew, who do you say I am? Matthew, who do you say that I am? You see, Jesus wants to get very, very personal. And He asks us that question today. As you're watching this Mass, ask yourself the question. If Jesus was standing in front of you and He asked you this question, Sally, who do you say that I am? Daryl, who do you say that I am? What would you respond? How would you reply to Jesus? Who is He to you? It's very personal. We always hear that from our Protestant brothers and sisters. Have you had a personal relationship with Jesus Christ? <clears throat> yeah, we do. It's very personal. It started in baptism and continues every day in the Eucharist, right? We continue to receive Him in the Eucharist every day that we can. Very personal relationship. But who do you say that I am? It's a foundational question, fundamental question. We have to answer it. If we don't know Him, we need to. And Simon Peter steps up. I love Simon Peter. He's always so bold. He's always putting his foot in his mouth. I relate to Simon Peter so much. Um, he, he tries to do things right, but Pope bet. He just kind of doesn't get it. But in this moment, he gets it. Simon Peter steps up to the plate, and he says, listen to this, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. <laughs> Peter just knocked it out of the park. He nailed this answer, right? He got it right, probably for the first time. You are the Christ. You're the Messiah. You're the long-awaited one of Israel. You're the one that we've been hoping for, that all the prophets spoke about. You are the one who's going to come and save us from our sins. You're the Son of the living God. Peter got it right. It's his profession of faith. And it's on this profession of faith, not Peter's imperfection as a man, but on his perfect pr pr profession of who he knows Jesus to be. That's what Jesus is about to build upon, okay? So here's the second thing that happens. Peter gets his name changed. Listen. Jesus looks at Peter and he says, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. For flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father has revealed it to you who is in heaven. Okay, Jesus is doing something here that's really cool. He says, Simon, that's his birth name, son of Jonah, right? You can also say John. Simon, son of John. He's letting us know that, that Simon is totally human, right? He was born of a, from a woman and a man. His father's name is John. So he's letting us know, this is Simon, this is the man of the earth, right? Um, but his dad didn't tell him who Jesus was. The Heavenly Father revealed that to Peter. At this moment, if I was Peter, I'd probably be looking around the room going like, yeah, I got it right, guys. Listen, you see what Jesus now told me? This is so cool. I finally got it. Flesh and blood didn't reveal it, but my Heavenly Father revealed it. So there was a direct interception in time in Peter's life that God revealed the Son. And Peter proclaimed it. And on that, Jesus now says to Peter, I say to you, you are Peter. I thought your name was Simon. No, 
I'm changing your name, dude. Your name is Peter. Because Peter means rock, right? So you're Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Okay, pause. Something incredible just now happened. Peter's name just got changed. This is fantastic. Those things happen in the Old Testament, right? Whenever God changes the direction of somebody's life, He changed their name in the Old Testament, right? Abram became Abraham, the father of many, right? Peter's name is changed from Simon to Peter. The name Peter means rock. All right? So he says, I'm changing the direction of your life, Peter. You were a fisherman. You were a man of the world. You are a man of the earth. You grew up and you fished, and you're a wonderful fisherman. You're incredible. But I'm no longer calling you to fish in the Sea of Galilee. I'm calling you now, Peter, to change your direction. You are now going to be a fisher of men. You're going to take the gospel far and wide and throw your net, not in the Sea of Galilee, but you're going to throw your net across the entire world. And you will bring souls because you're a rock. And upon this rock, upon your profession of faith of who I am, you're the Christ. I'm going to build my church. Notice Jesus doesn't say, I'm going to build my spirituality. All right? We got to get this right. In our world today, you've heard this expression, oh, I'm Christian, not Catholic. Oh, I don't pr practice a denomination. I'm Christian. Well, what does that mean? It means you, that the person makes up their own rules, right, in Christianity. It means they live how they want to live because there's an authority that's given to the church that, that conflicts what they want to do in their life. So that's just the way it is. So what is this? You're a rock, Peter, and I'm going to build my church, not my spirituality. Jesus came to establish a church, my friends. And that church has been standing for over 2,000 years. It's been through trials and tribulations. It's been persecuted, and the world has tried to destroy it. But yet it has not prevailed. Jesus established a church upon Peter. And we as Catholics should be able to look at this. We can go from Pope Francis, and then before him, Pope Benedict, before him, Pope John Paul II, and an unbroken line of succession of popes that traces all the way back to St. Peter. Just like we can take our President of the United States and trace his lineage all the way back to George Washington, so too do we do that with our Pope, right? It goes all the way back to St. Peter, and then you go right here to the transmission of authority. It's a word that sometimes our society does not like. To think that the church has an authority, a teaching authority over us in truths, matters of truth and morals. Indeed, she does. And this is where it comes from. It's the third point of the scripture today. So the first thing was there was a revelation of who Jesus is. Second thing is Peter gets his name changed to rock. And now the third thing, keys are given. Here we go. I will give to you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and, the, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven, for the gates of hell shall not prevail against you. All right, keys. Remember, they, they, they give authority. You have access to come and go to things that maybe you didn't have before. And so what Jesus is doing, if He wants to establish a church, He's the head of the church, He's got to give that authority to somebody. While He's no longer here on this earth, reigning on an earthly level, He reigns from the heavens as King, He's got to give that authority to somebody. And that authority is given to Peter. And that authority is shared in a particular way with the apostles. But Peter is the prince of, of the apostles. And so Peter has these keys. And whatever Peter says he wants to open with those keys, all of heaven proclaims it open. Whatever he closes with those keys, all of heaven closes. And I love this understanding. It says, the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. We have to rewire ourselves to understand what this means. It does not mean that hell is coming against the church and attacking us. That's not what it means. That's not what Jesus is saying. Read the scripture properly. The gates of the netherworld, the gates of hell will not prevail against us. They can't, they can't withhold. 
They can't stand because the church is attacking them. The church is bringing in the light of Christ into a world of darkness. We're on the move. We're the ones that are trying to claim this earth for the kingdom of Christ. And as we do, the church has the full authority of Jesus Christ, the teaching authority that's been given to Him. And so that truth has to be proclaimed to the whole world. And that truth is what goes out into the world. We're not running with our tail between our legs as the world chases the church and tries to get us to change our doctrines for whatever whim that it chooses to, to throw at us. No, that's not what happens. The church has authority. And the church goes out with a message of love, a message of mercy, a message of peace and truth. And truth always exposes lies. Light always dispels darkness. And the gates of hell can't prevail against the authority of the church. We have to know that. And so the church is sent out as a beacon of light, Jesus says to us. You are the light of the world, right? The church is a beacon of light, and in our world today, we want to define truth however we want to define truth. Whatever makes me feel good is what I define to be true, and that's not true. <laughs> it's the furthest thing from the truth. Truth is defined by Jesus. It is Jesus who says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. If I want to know what this life is about, I can't depend on what my emotions tell me it to be. Life is like shifting sand, right? We can't build a house on sand. I can't build the foundations of my spiritual life, of my moral life, on the passing whims of my emotions and the shifting sand on the shore. If I want to build my spiritual life on something, my friends, it has to be on the rock. That the waves can crash up against it and it won't move. Life will throw us a whole lot of curves. And there will be very difficult things that we deal with in life. And if we aren't standing upon the rock, upon our faith, then we will be wiped away. I'll close with this story. When I was a young priest, um, my first year in priesthood, uh, there was a very tragic accident that happened. And um, the husband and wife, their two sons, uh, both in their 20s, were coming back from New Orleans, and they got in a terrible car accident. One of the sons lived, and one of the sons died. Unfortunately, it, it was a terrible experience. But in one way, it really shaped who I am as a priest, because of the faith of the mother and father. They were standing in the midst of what would be the most tragic thing I think a mother and father could ever imagine. Their son died at 20, 21 years old, and the other one was in critical condition. And as we stood around the bed of that son who had lived, um, and we had to tell him that his brother died in the car wreck. He was the one driving. Um, in the midst of that sorrow, in the midst of that pain, in the midst of the cross, in the midst of what seemed like just a hopeless situation where people could understandably sit and crumble under the weight of that cross, the mom did something so powerful and so profound and it touched my heart so deeply. She stood by the bed of her son. She said, son, she said, Jesus ain't going to give us nothing more than we can't handle. He's going to walk with us the whole way through. She said, because I believe in one God. He's my Father. He's Almighty. He's the Omnipotent One. And I believe in Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God. He's my brother. He's my Lord. He's my Savior. He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And I believe in the Holy Spirit. And Friends, she began going through our entire Catholic creed, what we profess right here in Mass every single day, our creed. This is what she stood upon. She wasn't going to stand upon the shifting sand of her emotions, but she had to claim in that moment, in the midst of the greatest tragedy that a mother could face, she had to stand upon a rock. And that was her Catholic faith. And her emotions that she would have would crash upon that rock and they would disappear because she wasn't going to give them the time of day. She knew who her God was, and she knew that no matter what she goes through in life, He is her rock, He is her foundation, and her stronghold. And she sought safety and comfort, not in her emotions, but in the Catholic Church, in the teachings of her faith. She knew them to be true, and she conformed her life to that truth. 
And that is the great joy that we have as Catholics. I can navigate through this world, a life of shifting sand at times, but stand silently upon the rock of my Catholic faith, unapologetically, with great joy and with a great strength, because we know that Jesus Christ Himself will always speak through the church, and that He will lead us one day into eternal glory. Amen. And so let's stand together and we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And so we gather all of our prayers up together and we place them before our Heavenly Father. For the church throughout the world, may God's love, may God's love shine through our actions and words. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all who exercise public office, may the Spirit assist them in fulfilling their duties with integrity, honesty, and a desire to help those in need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all Christians, especially those who are persecuted for their fidelity to the gospel, may God strengthen and encourage them in their time of trial. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all in this community of faith in need of prayers, May God enfold them with His mercy and grant them peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially those who have, no, who have no one else to pray for them, may God, in His great mercy, receive them into the fullness of life in the risen Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for your prayers and your intentions as you gathered at home that you hold in the silence of your own hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord you are here. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for calling us here today. For giving us the beautiful gift of life, the gift of our family and friends, and the gift of your Son Jesus, who gives us the church as a firm foundation. We ask our Blessed Mother and St. Joseph to pray for us, to take all of our prayers in their immaculate and chaste hands and place them within the burning heart of their Son. We ask all of this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth, work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. 
by the mystery of this water and wine may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine work of human hands it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash away my iniquities, O Lord. Cleanse me from all my sin. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and evil, all his holy church. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption, through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed a man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in the mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, 
so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Mario, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you've gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. And to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And now the Savior's command, informed by divine teachings, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer to each other the sign of peace. peace. Lamb of God, Take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy, and graciously perfect and sustain us, so that in all things we may please you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. 
with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our celebration's ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.